So we're going to quickly go through an example here. Um, the question is going to take up more room than the solution, uh, partly because the, the numbers here are not particularly nice. So um, I'm going to kind of take some of the values given in the book without necessarily doing those calculations, which we would need a calculator for, and I, I don't have one on me. So the, the idea here is you can, you can pretty much jump straight to the, the result that we derived here. Um, and, and you know, so for simplicity, we can take you know, x naught to be 0. Uh, y naught is going to be that initial elevation of, of 4. Uh, theta is 5 degrees. So we can put our calculator in, in degree mode, or we can, uh, I guess it's what, 5 pi over, over 180, or um, that's pi over uh, 36. If we want to convert to radians, um, we have uh, v naught is, is going to be 350 as given. And g, because we're using feet, g will be 32. Right? And, and so you plug all these, all these details in, and we're going to get um, 350 cos of pi over 36 times t for the x component. And then we're going to get 4 plus 350 sine of pi over 36 times t minus, so half of 32 is 16, minus 16t squared. OK? So that's our position function. And, and so we want to figure out how far the, the BB travels, right? So we want to figure out, you know, so there's going to be some, you know, point here, say x1 and y1, right? And that's going to be given by, say, r at some later time, t1, right? And, and so, and we want, you know, y1 is going to be sort of zero in this setup. And, and so we're looking for what is the value of t that makes the y component equal to zero. And it's quadratic, right? So you, you're going to have to plug that into the calculator, plug the whole thing, set it equal to zero, quadratic formula. Um, and of course, there's positive and negative square roots to deal with, but the negative square root is going to give you a negative time. Um, and I mean, we throw that out, but you could imagine if you reverse time and kind of went back, you know, through the gun, it would kind of land over there somewhere, you know, but we're not going to do that. Uh, we want time going forward. And, and so you set this equal to zero and you find that that happens for T. I think the textbook says it's about, uh, 2.03, right? Um, and so then for t equal to 2.03, um, well, x at 2.03 is going to be this, just this 3, you take the 350 times the cos uh, pi over, over 36. And now we multiply by the 2.03. And again, it's calculator work. We figure out what that is. If I, I may be misremembering, but I think this comes out to be about 704. Um, and that's going to be in, in feet, right? I, I might be remembering that number incorrectly. But that, that's basically it, right? That tells us how far, how far it went. Right. And, and so now there, there are other variations on this. There, the next example in the textbook, I'm, I'm not going to do a video for, but you can take a look at that. Um, similar idea in the next example, uh, instead of being given the elevation and trying to figure out how far um, the thing travels, um, you're given a target, right? And so basically what you'll be doing is you're given a sort of target value for an endpoint, right? And, and now y1 won't be zero in that case because the target's probably up on the wall or something like that. But you know how far away the target is, you know how high it is, and, 
And so then you, the goal there would be to figure out what is the angle of elevation that you need to, to hit that particular target, right? And same, same kind of idea, right? Um, you would, uh, you would have your, your position function here. Theta would be unknown, right? Um, and, and also, I guess maybe T is not going to be known, but you'll have two equations to work with, right? Because this here, you will be able to set equal to the target X value. This, you would be able to set equal to the target Y value. Um, and then you, you do have enough information there to, to solve the problem.